Hello everybody, this is D from Restorm Project. Thank you so much for tuning in. Um, I've had this uh, channel for a little over two years and I have put like some videos, very minuscule stuff. Um, I just recently started putting up videos about how to start as a contractor, some home inspections. I did some uh, trying to make my wife laugh. Uh, a Spanish one. Yeah, you know, I'm just rambling on about the the content of the channel. Um, what I want to talk to you about today is uh, five things that contractors do to clients. What contractors do wrong to clients. Uh, and um, just want to get started. If you're new to this channel, please uh, like and subscribe, share the video, give it a thumbs up. I would really, really appreciate you in helping me grow this channel. So, um, the one thing that contractors do wrong. To clients number one is they don't truly quote you correctly meaning if you have a bathroom renovation that you want done and the bathroom comes in and they'll tell you it's gonna cost you about twenty thousand dollars I'm just throwing numbers out there um, don't take me by those the bathroom is gonna cost you twenty thousand dollars including materials um, they come in they start um, doing numbers they start doing the work and realize that they didn't quote it correctly so in comes an unexpected fee out of nowhere. Oh, I have to change your plumbing, so I have to charge you X, Y, and Z for that. Um, your electrical is shot, so I have to charge you another extra for this, that, and the third. Um, this is the wrong shower door, so I got to charge you for a new one. You know, things like this happen. Now, the video is going to sound like it's extremely negative when it comes to contractors. I, myself, I'm a contractor, uh, home inspector, a licensed home inspector here in the state of New York. Um, one of the reasons some of these things happen is, you know, when we come in to give you a quote, we're looking at everything with our eye as far as what we could do, what we're going to do, and what would the outcome be at the end. So we'll give you a quote on that. But we, what we cannot quote you on is the condition of the plumbing behind the walls, the conditions of the electrical behind the walls. Um, we can only quote you for, okay, we're going to do the demo, we're going to rip it up, and then we're going to start doing the bill but what, ha what happens with this quote now you underestimated what was behind the walls and what was underneath the floor um some instances some people cut joists to run plumbing which is obviously a no-no um there's some electrical wires that I, I i've seen myself i open up walls where you have one electrical wire coming in they didn't have enough or there was a box there at some point they took the box out ran the new wire and connected everything together you can't do that. That's a, that. That's a fire hazard. So now that has to be replaced. The way I would, the way I would fix it is, I'm pulling the line completely out, or I'm gonna take that wire that's there, pull it back, put it in a junction, in a metal junction box, you know, by code, make sure everything is good, and then jump from that line over, or just run a brand new line completely. Um, there's always gonna be unexpected fees to whatever quote you get when it comes to a. Uh, any kind of work that you want to do in the house. So one of the things that we do wrong is that we don't quote it correctly. And there's always additional fees. There will always be additional fees from getting rid of, from installing your plumbing, installing your electrical, from to your tiling, to your lighting, to the type of vanity, the, the toilet system itself. It all, they, they all have different quotes, but you get a bigger number of what we assume will be a basic bathroom. So that's one of the things that 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 we, and I'm gonna say we because I'm a contractor as, as well. That's one of the things that we do wrong. We don't quote you correctly, and you take us at that number. And when these things start popping up, oh, you're just trying to rob me. Is the mentality, right? Um, number two is pretty much I covered it on, on on the first one, which would be unexpected fees. Things do come up that you would have to be charged for because this is gonna be extra material, extra time and extra effort when it comes to it. Now, as a contractor, I'll tell you, oh, this bathroom is gonna take about, say a week to do. Sometimes we underquote that time. We'll tell you it's gonna be a week and it might be a week later, week, a week and a half, two weeks later into the work, you're wondering what's going on. You said a week. You have to take into consideration the time it took to start the work, whatever demo had to be done, only to realize that there's so many other things that have to be repaired, have to be replaced, right? Those things that have to be repaired or replaced are going to take time away from the initial schedule that you were given. 
So if it's a week, now it might be an added two days or three days, whatever the case may be. If you have to do the entire plumbing and if you have to let an inspector come in and look at the work, have them inspect it, then get a plumber to do the plumbing work and the inspector got to come back and check that work. This, this is all assuming if you're doing a, a brand new um, home renovation where there has to be an inspector on site that's going to check everything. It's a, it will be a stage ins inspection as opposed to a... Um, a plumbing or electrical inspection, which we call a face inspection. So that now went from one week to two weeks. So one of the things that we do wrong is we'll tell you, oh, it's going to be a week, and it's really not a week. Um, my advice when it comes to this is understand, at least from what I do, is I, I could tell you, you're going to ask me, how long is the work going to take? Um, I can't really give you a, a time frame on, on it because we don't know what to expect. Okay, just just throw me a date there. Like, what do you say? Uh, I could tell you the work is going to take about two to three weeks, but expect it for it be to be a lot longer because of issues that may exist, problems with material supplies, um, latenesses on deliveries, things of that nature. That's something that you have to take into consideration and try your best not to hold the contract the hostage with their money or whatever face fee that's coming when it comes to that kind of work. Uh, the third thing, contractors do to clients that are wrong. Not having the proper tools nor the proper manpower to be able to get the job done. Um, some of us are starting out or some of us have been in business for a long time and never really got all the tools that necessary to do some type of work. As work comes in, it's like, oh, you know what? I need a, I need a towel cutter. You go get a slider. Oh, all of a sudden, I need a wet saw. You go get a wet saw. Oh, I need a sledgehammer. Some contractors don't have this, especially if they're starting out. So this might actually delay your work a little bit longer because some places may have what they need. Other places don't. So now you got to go take your time to go pick this up, come back. It's already four in the afternoon. You know, you're not going to stay working there to 8 p.m. And um, when it comes to that part of it, it could be extremely frustrating to the client. And this is something that we do. Um, you know, adding to that, you know, as far as the time frame, sometimes we'll be there. We'll tell you we're going to be there at 7 in the morning. And we show up at 9 o'clock in, in the afternoon. That's, uh, that's uh, number four on the list. Be on time. Make sure your contractor is there on time. He Make sure he's there every day to answer whatever questions you have. Make sure you ask all the questions. Uh, some of us don't show up when we need to be. Uh, we leave that up to the employees that we have to be able to show up inside. That way we have some form of presence. Here's what happens. We work in, in, a, in an industry where there's a lot of people that are very skilled, but a lot of people that are extremely irresponsible. I only have two individuals that I work with now. I used to have a team of 15 guys and I had a lot of them that were very, very, very responsible um, from having issues with drugs or alcohol, sticky fingers. Oh, I'm gonna be there tomorrow and don't show up to like almost 12 o'clock. You know, th 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 there's so many things that, that, that you have to like take into consideration when it comes to getting into this kind of work that could really hinder your, your reputation. Not being on time is definitely one of those. Not getting the job done on time is definitely a bigger one of those. So the issue with the timing, we're going to be there. It's going to take us five days. We're going to be there every day, seven in the morning to three o'clock. But we're not there every day and we're not showing up seven in the morning to three o'clock. This time we still, it's eight o'clock at night. And you're like, why is this guy still here? Like, I'm ready to take a shower and go to work. Like, I don't want to be rude and kick him out. But you have to say something and kick him out. You don't always feel good about it, but you have to. If not, it could be 11 o'clock at night and this guy's still swinging a hammer in your house. That's that's uh, number four thing, n number four thing that contractors do wrong. You know, that they, they, they over promise and under deliver when it comes to that. The most important one is number five. And this is where the evil reputation of the contractors come. There are some of us that will talk to you about the work, give you a quote ask for a deposit and once we get that deposit you never see us again this is such such a horrible way of doing business and a way to make all of us look bad 
in the end because it's 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 just you're a crook you're a thief and if this is the kind of contractor that you are and you're watching this video i feel strongly about that when it comes to you um taking somebody's money to not deliver something that's a hustle that's a scam so you're not a contractor you're a scammer you have to make sure that everything that comes in that's going to come out of your pocket is it, it's going to be covered so if you have the work that's going to be done at home and a contractor is charging you i'm just going to throw a number out there let's say fifty thousand dollars he's charging you to do the kind of work and he's asking for fifty percent of the money you have to make sure that you're guaranteed that something is going to come out of there. There's materials on site, there's tools on site, something that in the event that this individual disappears, you might be able to take this and get rid of it to get some of your money back. You know, um, this is why one of the one of the main reasons I always tell clients if if you're iffy about the work, you buy the materials. Now, materials being what they are, the prices that are going on right now is just everything just skyrocketed. So it's kind of hard to be a contractor in this business and, and include materials in it because whatever your labor is your materials is going to be almost double that now and it, it sucks the pricing of it goes where you have your labor fee you have your material fees you have your handling fees and your delivery fees all of that gets combined together into that one quote um and if you come out of pocket and give money to me and you have to be the one calling me to come to your house to do the work after you paid me. That's a problem. That's a, that's just a big, big problem. Um, to cut some of that stuff off, you know, I'll give you some pointers of what you can do to make sure that this does not happen to you. You make sure that when the contractor gives you the quote, you ask them, is this an open quote? Wait for their answer. And then if they don't know what an open quote is, you explain it to them. The open quote is in case there's any additional fees that may come arise. I want to be able to have the proper budget to be able to do the work while making sure you're getting paid. Once you say that, you take the worry of the mind like, oh, is the client going to take me for a ride now? So now you're starting to develop a little bit more of a relationship with them. You know, you let them know that I understand that there's going to be additional fees. I just need you to make sure that you write that on paper. Let me know. And if it could be added to the original quote in the invoice, I would really appreciate it. You and the contractor sign off agreeing on that on that extra fee. You both will be the wiser. Um, you ask them to make sure if they have the, the right tools. Do you have all the tools that you need to do this work? Is there anything that has to be purchased? If I have to purchase tools, that has to come out of your price, you know? Fair is fair because they're going to take that tool home with them. Unless you're thinking of doing this work yourself, it's okay if you want to have a wet saw laying around in your garage for a while. God bless you for that. Um, make sure time is of the essence. You let them know like this and that. I, I, I have a specifically time schedule for it. I'm only going to be available from this time to this time. Anything about that, I can't have anybody in the house. That way the contractor knows, okay, I need to be there at 7, 8, 9 in the morning to 3, 4, 5 p.m. After that, I, I have no access. I got to make sure I do this, and I got to make sure I do the money. Um, and then, obviously, the deposit. Make sure you check references. Make sure you check their previous work, pictures and videos of work that they've done before. And make sure you have a contract that you can sign, and you both, both parties agree on it. Get a third party involved. It doesn't have to be a lawyer. It could be a neighbor or a friend or whatever and stuff like that. And just sign off for that. That way you, you're covered, you're protecting your investment. The contractor is covered and everything is spoken and everything is out in the clear. And you don't have to worry about anything else other than, God forbid, you give them a deposit. Um, a 50% deposit for a $50,000 job, that's, it's a, that's just a lot of money. That's $25,000. That's something that you really got to think about. Do you really want to give somebody $25,000 of your hard-earned money to be able to start a job? I would ask for materialists. You go to Home Depot, price out the materials, get them delivered, have it there. When they come in, work something out. Listen, it's $50,000. we are going to break this into four payments. I'm going to give you 25% up front. I'm going to give you another 25 of that 100% when 
there's some form of progress. So if you got to do the framing or if you got to do the plumbing or the electrical, once that's done at the end of the week, I'll give you another 25. You get another 25 for another stage advancement and then the final payment on the day that you guys are done with the work. You know, um, the last thing that some contractors do is they leave a lot of stuff behind. Like they'll leave stuff that they don't want to carry, like screws or garbage bags or a half bag of concrete or half a bag of, of thin set or whatever, which could be annoying. But these are items that if you bought, they're not going to take with them. Now, if you bought the materials, the contractor start grabbing everything, throw it in his van, then, you know, there's something that they're doing you a favor because you're not going to use this. But at the same time, if you are going to use it, they're really not. So try to have an open communication. We're not that bad of individuals. We're not the devil. We're not going to, like, grow horns and smoke come out of our nose when you tell us something that you don't like. Be direct. Be respectable. But be direct about it. Um... This is that's pretty much all I could say as far as like things that we do wrong to clients and which is why we have the bad reputation that we have. And this is the Alvarado. This is my channel, Rest the Rest on Project. Please like, subscribe, share, hit that thumbs up, and I'll catch you guys on the next one.